Hi, my name is Robin. I'm a medical application specialist at Materialize in our headquarters in Belgium. Today, I will show you a few tips and tricks on how to create your non-manifold assembly for your finite element analysis. A non-manifold assembly is a critical step when performing a finite element analysis with multiple structures that are intersecting and interacting with each other. Let's have a look at an example with three vertebrae, six screws and two rods. We will create an intersection-based non-manifold assembly, so it is very important that the structures are in fact intersecting with each other. While the screws in reality will have holes to let the rods pass, it is very important that you don't have those holes in your original screws. Since you need an intersection, you need screws without the holes where the rods are. The purpose of a non-manifold assembly is to have surfaces that make the nodes of the triangles of different structures correspond where they are intersecting. Let's have a look at the final result to see what we are expecting. When you zoom in and look at an intersection between different structures, you see that the nodes of the different triangles intersect. This is needed for a good finite element analysis so that the forces can be transmitted from one structure to the other. Now let me show you how I obtained a non-manifold assembly with a different mesh for each different structure. And let's start from the beginning. The first thing to do is to create the non-manifold assembly. The non-manifold assembly will have to be created in, in a hierarchical way, meaning that from the first structure that you select, the second structure will be subtracted, then the third structure will be subtracted from the two first, and so on and so forth. So the last structure that you select will be the only one that will be untouched. Let's start with the top vertebrae, that will be the main entity, then select the second vertebrae and the third vertebrae. Let's then select the screws that do intersect with each one of the vertebrae and that will be subtracted from them. And then finally let's select the rods that are intersecting with the screws and hence will be subtracted from them. Click apply after choosing the name of your choice to create a non-manifold assembly. Once it's done, you can hide the original structures and observe the result. If you zoom in, you will see that those triangle nodes correspond with the triangle nodes of the structure with which they are intersecting. Now, if we look inside the non-manifold assembly, we will see in the surface list that we can get back to a surface for each and every one of the original objects as well as a different surface for each one of the interfaces. So let's for example hide the vertebrae. We can see the interfaces of the screws with the vertebrae. Now that we have created a non-manifold assembly we need to create a mesh that is appropriate for finite element analysis. To do so, I will use the adaptive remesh tool so that I can choose a different type of mesh for each of the different structures. I will choose the non-manifold assembly as the entity and give it a mesh size of 2 mm. Then, since I want the screws and the rods to have a different mesh size than the vertebrae, I will enter local meshing parameters, namely for the screws and their interface with the vertebrae, I will choose a mesh size of 1 mm and add this to the list of local parameters. Then I will choose the rods and their intersection with the screws and I will give them a mesh size of 0.5 mm and add that local parameter to the list. When clicking apply, 
the software will calculate a new mesh for each one of these different structures, a mesh that will be of 2 mm on the vertebrae, 1 mm on the surface of the screws and the interface between the screws and the vertebrae, and a finer mesh of 0.5 mm on the surface of the rods and the interface of the rods with the screws. It is important to remember that those surfaces and interfaces will have triangle nodes that correspond where the structures are connected with each other, which will allow for a good finite element analysis. When the calculation is over, we can split the non-manifold assembly using the split non-manifold assembly tool to get back to our original objects. Click apply and you now have five objects again, three vertebrae, one object for all the screws and one object for all the rods. They now all have the desired mesh with the triangle nodes that are corresponding at the intersections. You can now finally create the volume mesh for each one of these structures. I will create a volume mesh that has a maximum of 3 mm for each volume element on the vertebrae. For the screws, I will create a volume mesh that is a bit smaller, maximum 2 mm. And finally, for the rods, I will create an even finer volume mesh of maximum 1 mm. You can observe the result if you show one of the, st one of the standard sections and that you clip in the properties so that you can see the created volume meshes. And what you see here is that you have a volume mesh of a bigger size on the vertebrae, of a smaller size in the screws and of an even smaller size in the rods. It is also important to notice that the volume elements do have corresponding nodes, which is what you want in order to perform a finite element analysis. You can now export your surface and volume meshes to your preferred solver through the file export menu and choosing the solver of your choice. This ends this video tutorial. Thank you for watching.